All right, welcome back. Um, let's quickly dive into our conversation for the day. Like we had intimated, we shall be looking at um, the recent uh, uh, pronouncement by the Senate at, um, it, at, a need, at a need to reduce uh, our political parties. Now, during the 2019 general elections, we had well over 90 political parties participate, many of whom could not uh, win major seats. Uh, some couldn't even contest fully. And this has made the Nigerian Senate decide to work with INEC to reduce um, numbers of political parties in order to reduce election expenses. However, some of these parties are up in arms against this decision, as they say it is uh, a breach of their constitutional right. Uh, this morning, we'll take a look at uh, the merits and demerits of this uh, move, if uh, effectually or rather, eventually, it is, uh, it is done. Uh, joining us in our Port Harcourt studio, we have um, Edwin Clark. Did Edwin I just say Edwin Clark? Edwin Jonathan, who is a political analyst. Good morning, Edwin Jonathan. Good morning. Uh, for a while, I called you Edwin Clark. How did that make you feel? Yeah, nice. Very good. All right, good morning, good morning once again. Yes, uh, let's dive straight into our conversation. Um, you listen to the intro. Uh, would you say, would you rightly say that this move by Senate uh, would be a welcome development, looking at all the parameters? Yes, uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, it's, I've always uh, thought on, along the line that this, uh, what I describe as a uh, permit me to say a motley collection of uh, uh, parties, it's not necessary for our democracy. Uh, it's a bit laughable that we have over 90 associations uh, who call themselves political parties, and the final analysis, in practical terms, only about two or so are doing the job. What is critical here is that you have 90 political parties, and these 90 minus two, are doing practically nothing. What do we need a political party for anyway? You need a political party to articulate ideas on governance. Yes, articulate ideas on governance. And the last time I checked, if you are not on the right, you are on the left. If you are not on the left, you are in the middle. I don't know where else anybody can find himself that uh, you know, your ideas will not be accommodated. The Senate's move to reduce the number of political uh, parties is a welcome idea. If we must sanitize the political space and then give it some kind of a, a modicum of a sense of responsibility. You know, too many political parties, the people are confused. And it's, it's, it's a, yeah, it, it was a recipe for confusion. It was a recipe for all manner of anything you can say will go with it because uh, uh, it's, it's, it's most laughable. You know, in a democracy that we, if you like, fledging, we need some kind of certainty. We need some kind of idea, you know, on who stands where. As I speak with you, I don't even know what are the idea, the ideology of these parties with respect to who is on the right, who is on the left, or who is in the middle. So I think it's a welcome idea if, if the Senate will have the political will to push it through. I know that most uh, Nigerians and those of them who are already in that space right now will say it's a, it's a breach of their fundamental human right of freedom of association. And I say with every sense of responsibility, it is not true. You know, you are, you are, you are free to associate, but that the Constitution provides a guideline within which, you know, to exercise that freedom. Freedom that is without limits is not freedom. It's, it doesn't make sense. Every freedom that makes sense must be freedom within the limits and purview of the law. So my take is that it's a welcome uh, development and in fact is overdue. Edwin, uh, let me just um, bring to your notice that Nigeria is not the only country that has a multi, multiple uh, political parties. Now according to the Election Commission of India, uh, we're looking at a total of about 2,334 political parties in India that's as at March 2019 because they had an election, I think, and uh, 93 political parties were registered as of August this year. In the U.S., well, we have, well, we know that there are two major political parties uh, which dominate the uh, the space. 
we know that about 45 other political parties exist in the United States. Uh, in Brazil, they have 36 political parties, uh, which actually uh, uh, contested the presidential election, uh, the last presidential election. And in UK, which is similar to the US, they have all their political parties, uh, which, could, uh, which could bring the total sum for the UK to 405 political parties. And here in Africa, uh, let's begin with South Africa. South Africa has um, a, a total of about 613 political parties in South Africa. And it's broken down, some for the provincial and some for the national uh, party. Now, why do you think that the 91 political parties that um, contested or that their logos and names were imprinted in the ballot sheets of this year's election, why do you think it's too much if we are copying the likes of the UK or the US? Well, I, I know all those, uh, I know all those statistics that we have given. Yes, I know that uh, those number of parties exist there. The, the point here, we are dealing with a situation in uh, a, a local situation that is a bit intractable. Uh, while most of those uh, you know, countries can handle those number of parties, like in America and in the UK, as you have mentioned, those people have already honed their democracy to the point that people operate on principles. If you check through, most of those parties, they are other allies of the major political parties here and there. But here, we are trying to, uh, you, know, you know, put a system that will work for us according to our peculiar circumstances. Right now, you have identified major political parties, you know, but we have major political parties here also, the APC and the PDP and maybe any other one. But my take is that for us, because of who we are, what we are dealing with right now, we need a sizable number, a manageable number of political parties so that we can clearly identify what we are doing and then get people to embrace political ideals that are spread across a few political ident uh, identifiable political parties and build structures that will give us a sense of responsibility when we play politics according to the principles. Now, and again, you know, these people you mentioned, they are, majority of them are literate, you know, but in Nigeria, we have so many Nigerians who are not exactly politically literate. When they are confronted with 90 political parties, they don't even know what to do with what, and uh, you, on this, you don't know most of these parties, what they stand for, you know. So I am still of the view that if the Senate can work you know, very assiduously with, you know, with the executive and reduce the number of parties to a sizable and manageable, you know, figure, it will be better for our democracy, you know. Because, again, we go out, out, of, the, out of this country, see a lot of good things. We are not able to come back here and replay them or make them part of our reality. So if the only thing we can make part of our reality is that we have a burgeoning political structure that ha accommodates as much as 90 uh, political parties because we want to be like every other uh, member of the world. But are we playing it the way they are doing it in their own area? These crimes that you've mentioned, people stand on principles. They don't cross carpet easily from party A to party B. And most of the 90 political parties that you, we have on ground did not make any kind of impact. And I don't even know them, but we know we have uh, many, uh, as much as 90. So my take is that forget whatever is happening anywhere in the world. We, let's see how we can manage the structure of our own based on our political experience and based on the political education of key players and those who want to play again after now. I still believe that the move of the uh, National Assembly to cut it down to a, a sizable uh, you know, number is uh, commendable. Ed, um, Edwin, why shouldn't we think that uh, yes, this is just a move by uh, certain political um, um, gladiators to monopolize uh, the political space? Why shouldn't we think uh, in that line? Well, uh, it's okay to think. If anybody wants to think that way, it's okay. But me, I don't think that way. The reason is that even if you do not, even if you do not curtail, uh, bring it down to a sensible proportion, you still have key players who will still dominate the political space. What I think is that we should begin to find a way to, uh, you know, get our political uh, gladiators to play according to ideals and principles. 
that are identifiable that people can embrace from time to time. You know, most people join political parties without joining an ideal because they don't find anyone. It's okay, this is big, or this is where I believe that my interest can be accommodated. But that interest in, 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 in clear terms is not even identifiable. So I, it, it may be okay to argue that some people want to just, uh, you know, uh, command the political space by reducing the number of uh, p parties that are available. But that is not, I don't, I don't subscribe to that uh, submission because even as it is, they can still control the political space, you know, because already two major political parties have emerged. For me, I think it will make sense maybe to reduce it to just three. And the APC, the PDP, and any other party, and people can find, you know, find their interest being accommodated within that political space if that interest is based on principles, as it were. The reason, a lot of times, research has revealed that most of the people who are in one political party or the other, up to the 90, is that the interest may not necessarily be based on principles or, or a better Nigeria, but uh, a better personal agenda, where at least uh, they can have uh, the political space, they can have uh, the opportunity to speak also in, in, in a prime position as political leaders. Jonathan, uh, thanks for your opening remarks. Now you're joined by another guest, but this time in Lagos. He is Raman Adebi. We'll come back to you very shortly, Dr. Edwin. Uh, Raman is the Lagos State Chairman, Liberation Movement. Raman, you're welcome to Thank the you program. very much. It's good to be here. I guess it was the traffic or the rains that delayed you. Of course, the rain. It was the rain. Or the <laughs> rain. Yeah, of course, the rain hit the traffic. <laughs> is it still raining? Yeah, no, it's uh, better off now. Okay, great. Yeah. So we're talking about the plan by the Senate to reduce the number of political parties we have in Nigeria. And uh, my opening question to our guest in, in Port Harcourt was that countries we look up to for different things, India, United States, United Kingdom, even South Africa, they have multiple, they have even more than 91 political parties that we say we have. And they haven't pruned it to any number. We know that in the US, for example, uh, the two major political parties, the, the, the Democrats and uh, the Republican. We know in the UK they have their own Labour Party, the Conservatives and uh, the Liberal Party, so to speak. Now, would you say that the, the, having 91 political parties is the problem, or the politicians are the problem, or the electoral umpire is the problem? Thank you very much. Good morning, Nigerians. I think, um, first and foremost, we must say to ourselves, are we ready to practice democracy? Because when you practice democracy, democracy comes with much space of parties. And when you're doing that, it, you know, it gives opportunity to the people. It follows the constitutional rule of Nigeria, which gives freedom of association to people, to express their mindset, to join ideologies, and to believe and foster what they believe in. And you know, because of the polity, and where we have found ourselves since 1999 to now, in the, in the space of how people, personality, have been, have been determining our political space. That's why majority of people are some bit confused. And I'll buttress my point with the fact that uh, most people are saying two-party system. The question is, when the criteria are set right, parties fielding candidates will choose which of the uh, position to feel candidate for, because it will go in line with your ideology and what you believe in. And for Senate saying that they want to reduce the number of political party to a decisive number, I think it's, a, it's an infringement on the right of every Nigerian, because the constitution, which is the supreme law, you know, does not state otherwise. So, and the beauty of it being discussed now is for every Nigerian to test, to ask themselves a critical question, how are we are familiar with these political parties and how are these political parties engaging Nigeria to become their voice, to become the, 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 the checkmate to the ruling government to ensure that they conform with democratic principles and practice and we begin to ensure that the dividend of democracy you know, is being handed down to the people. Because at the end of the day, the beauty of municipal party is that the people are the major game. Because when you have limited uh, numbers, Gladiators will come, and at the end of the day, Nigerians will be repeating themselves in a virtual circles because they will move from party A to B, knowing full well that there is no alternative for Nigerians to express their voice. 
You know, you know, Raman, uh, we, we have over 90 parties as we speak. But you and I know, I mean, it's on, it's, it, can be, it can be doubted that there are two parties in Nigeria today. So, I, I, so, think, so, I think so, the word, So, so if, you look at, if you look at the argument, uh, uh, pruning the numbers to five, uh, necessary, I mean, wouldn't necessarily um, change much. The, the choices are still there. Even with the 90 we have, the choices are still there. We have, when, the results, when we saw the results for the election in 2019, some parties were scoring zero in some states on the presidential election. We're scoring zero, zero, zero votes. And then you keep asking. You look at, you look at the, the size of the ballot paper. Uh, it, could act, it could hardly take my thumb print or either of my prints because of course I'm on the large side. Uh, you know, so all of these are issues that we should be dealing with. Uh, so I wouldn't think that um, putting it down uh, uh, could, would rather uh, determine people's choices or reduce people's choices. Uh, it's a good question you've asked, and I'll explain to you. Uh, what, the word prune down should not come into our psyche. That's number one. The word setting criteria for people to participate at that upper echelon is what should come into our psyche. You understand? Because when you say pull down, you're denying people's rights. When you say, okay, I'm setting the criteria for participating in the presidential election, which is the only one that everybody is focusing on. Because if you look down the line, you see that this is the first time Nigeria is celebrating plurality of people on, on different party platform, you know, getting involved at different strata of uh, positioning. And that is the beauty. We, are, we call ourselves an emerging country. You, if you're an emerging country, you are meant to face challenges. And how well you overcome your challenges by understanding, by knowledge, by, you know, by education is what will help us to, to grow as a country. But because we want to go from, from this ideology, uh, this, this practice is not favorable to us, we kill it. How are we going to evolve? Nobody evolves like that. You have to evolve systematically. And as you evolve, the criteria will be clear. The people will have choices. And before you know it, uh, the generality of the people will become aware. Yes, 2019 has its own challenge, no doubt. But there's a learning point from that going forward that as Nigerians, we are now aware. When something goes into your psyche, you, it, helps your, it helps your further behavior after that time on because you will seek to know. And by the time you seek to know, the, the issue of big the ballot box uh, issue will not be a challenge because we're going to embrace technology. And technology will eliminate all these challenges that we're thinking of. Because when people are looking at problems, we must always look at the good side and the advantage and the solution we can put forward to it. So that's my standpoint on this. Okay, there are two things you mentioned, but let me pose the question to Dr. Jonathan in our Port Harcourt studio. Uh, let me begin with the electronic voting system that he talked about. Now, Raman said that um, if we're using the electronic voting system, uh, whether or not we have a million political parties, you know, it won't be a problem. So do you think that the government and the electoral umpire especially should look into uh, us transiting into using uh, the electronic means of voting rather than a long ballot paper that is about a kilometer long and then it's very difficult for people to turn print. Should we be looking forward to having uh, a voting system uh, being electronically done? Uh, voting system. Yes, again, but that comes with a lot, a lot of challenges, which, you know, um, involves a lot more expenses on uh, training people on how the system works, you know. That's a, a very good step that will take us closer to the uh, director that we seek. But, you know, just as I have mentioned earlier, you know, even with the electronic uh, uh, voting system, we still need to sensibly, you know, if you like, uh, deal with the issue of how many political parties we have. They are, they, you see, you, you and I know that most of these political parties are election time political parties. It's only in the election time that you hear them talk on radio, on TV, or even the print media say some after the election, they fizzle out, you know, because the election time that be forced to do all of that. But if they are true political parties, they should exist even during governance. They should provide viable opposition, viable, you know, criti uh, criticism to the government in power. That's the only way to enrich the government all, and also to show Nigerians that they are a viable alternative before the elections. 
I feel, and I still say it with every sense of responsibility, that tampering with the number of political party does not violate the fundamental human rights of Nigerians in any way. It simply means we have a template. Please express your political idea within the template that is made available. The 1999 constitution is, is for, for my, in my mind, is still a good constitution, it's part of the criticism. We have not, in, in, in most cases, obeyed the provisions, you know, particularly chapter two. When we do that, and then see, we can now begin to deal with the bottlenecks, which of course every system would have bottlenecks. But we have not even been able to, you know, deal with it like 30% in, in terms of obedience. Now the provisions are quite coerced, they are quite expressive, they are, they, they, are, they are very fundamental in the sense that give Nigerians a sense of belonging if we, we have leaders who will drive it according to the, you know, uh, the, um, the elements of constitutional democracy. So I agree with you that, you know, electronic voting is the way forward. But again, I still agree with the National Assembly that, you know, trying to deal with the number of political parties to give some kind of certainty because you have large number of Nigerians, who, a, a large number of voters who are still politically illiterate. Going through that massive number of parties, it's difficult to make a choice. And it's a recipe for confusion, which we have been having so far in our electionary electro electro system. You know. So I subscribe to, if the National Assembly will drive it through, provide a template, three, four, five, whatever, but certain template that will enable people to look at uh, uh, party A, party B, and then make a choice where to express your political ideas in the interest of this nation. For me, 90 is still very, very uh, so much for Nigerians. Now, America can handle 100, 400, or whatever, UK. These people are politically enlightened. Even from the small space they occupy, they still know exactly in what direction the nation should be going. That's my take on that. You know, you know it's, it's a good thing that you just mentioned um, the US and other climbs with a um, larger number of parties. So I would even ask, because um, Robin talked about the fact that uh, what we should be looking at should be uh, uh, creating criteria for the existence of these parties. Uh, shouldn't the conversation be about um, creating guidelines and criteria and ensuring that these parties uh, have ideologies uh, that could move the space further than uh, the whole talk of um, cutting down of numbers? I agree with you fundamentally, but it's still the same way of saying, let's, if you create criteria that will be a, a, a bit limiting, some of them will not be able to meet those criteria, and a lot will still shout that their fundamental human rights have been short circuited No, but in any case, 90 for me is still large. The criteria, okay, but if the criteria will lead to downsizing, if you like, the number of political parties to just... Uh, maybe five, six, seven manageable proportion. I still think that the interests of Nigerians can, every Nigerian can be accommodated in any five political platform. Oh, sure. If it is really about Nigeria, moving Nigeria forward, I think five or six political platform will do. And that can emerge by following what you have just said rightly from the studio there, that set up uh, you know, criteria for recognizing political parties it's a bit too uh, uh, liberalized. That's why you have as much as 90. But again, watch the conversation will go on the other side that is limiting. Dr. Jonathan, we'll come back to you in a moment. Uh, Raman, you, you talked about the more crazy, which is a question I'm going to ask uh, Edwin much later. But you, you, you said that, um, that we need to, because we're a democratic nation, we're practicing democracy, uh, we should allow you know, people who are have interest in owning or starting a political party to do that. Uh, David talked about uh, the ideology of political parties, which most of them lack. But let's talk about the national spread, the national presence of these political parties. You know, uh, it, most of them, majority of them, are not in every, they don't cut across every state. Uh, we know a lot of political parties that you only hear their name in the major cities, not even in the local government areas of the, of the states. You only know them during the election, you see their colors, they're having a procession, they're blocking the road. Do you think that really we should still have these kind of people having a political party or standing under, a, or on a platform rather, of a political party when no one knows about them, only during the election period, as uh, Dr. Jonathan said? Yeah, um, I'll come by saying that for you to be 
to uh, for a political party to spring up, it goes through a set of criteria under INEC. And one of the criteria is that you must have representation in almost all the states of the Federation, including Abuja. And that criteria, if it was not satisfied, INEC will not register those parties. So we must take that as a step to, to, you know, to say that INEC has done, as far as the guidelines that we have now is concerned, INEC has done a due diligence on that. Because I am an experienced uh, person when it comes to that. I can tell that INEC will not register you if you do not have a representation across board. But we, 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 in the last election, we saw people, some parties having zero votes. Is it that the, when, the representation when, in that state when, did when, not vote? When you say people have zero vote in a particular state, it means that the, the, the choice of the people, you understand, the choice of the people vary away from them into the other parties. That's number one factor you must look at. Then um, I have, through the elections, I saw the addition and subtraction, you know, don't let us begin to argue that here. Because you see some votes, at the polling units, they are X. By the time they get to the coalition center, they are minus X. By the time they get to the uh, final result uh, appointment, they are plus Y. We've seen all these shenanigans go up, uh, you know, and INEC, you know, has a lot to answer in that regard. But as we grow as uh, democracy, all these challenges, when they evolve, it's for us as a people to overcome them. From the regulatory authority, which is INEC, and from, from, from the political space, which is the people. And the question is, do the people know the parties? And that's why the, the education needs to come in play. Because continuous education is what is critical. And when you are, see, if you don't know, you will not move towards the people, uh, towards the party. Because if you are not informed, you become deformed of that information. And when we get to begin to educate our people, this last election has opened the mindset of Nigerians to the fact that, oh, Nigeria is actually not a two-party state or a one-party state. It is a multiplicity of party state. Do the Nigerian uh, student of history even understand that before now? Not enough of people understand that. But this uh, exper experiment has shown the people. Because we need to grow. We must not begin to say that we have challenges and the only answer to our challenge is to begin to crash or, 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 or break. We must find a way to improve on it. We must find a way to ensure that the people get more robust information to assist them in taking a decision. Mm. And the people's choice must not be infringed upon. That's my submission. Okay. You know, you know I'm looking at the 2019 election and it is, uh, it is, uh, it is said to be the, the most expensive that Nigeria ever embarked on, 189 billion naira. And uh, when you look at the figures, you begin to wonder uh, why we had to go spend this huge sum of money um, in uh, perpetrating, uh, propagating an election in 20, 2019, which also brings, uh, brings um, the question to four, that uh, this could be a good reason to, or rather, if we had to prune this parties down, uh, that in a way should also reduce the cost of, um, of this election. Good uh, question. What you need to critically check is that what is a major expenditure item? in that budget. Mm. For Nigeria, I think one of the critical part of that is security. When you have a country that is, you know, that, that doesn't have security challenges, then voting, voting should not be an expensive affair. Voting should come easily, it's because the people will have a choice before them. And easily they will, they will gravitate towards the party in which they desire. So the cost of our election is a function of where we are as a country. How well have we fared in our governance system to ensure that we build the, the institution of government to function properly? Because all these people were voting money for. Naturally, year in, year out, in, the, in, in every other year, they get funding. So what you take a portion of money should be the electoral materials and everything. And with technology, we will reduce a lot of them to bare minimum. And that's, what, that's how we need to be thinking, because we need to be system thinking of how we save ourselves a lot of cost. Is the multiplicity of party. Let me tell you something. You can have as much party 
but you must give them as much inf information and education. And then when the technology to who do gives, that... Who gives the information? It starts, it starts with, with the agency of government, which is the NOA. It starts with INEC. It starts with the political party. The political party has a limited space to reach out in the people's face because of the guideline. Because you, you, can, you cannot begin your campaign if you're not closer to the election time. Of course, this, this period of uh, governance gives you the, oppo uh, the opportunity to become the voice of the people, to give credible solutions to the challenges that we're facing as a nation and the people's voice. Because one of the critical things is you must not limit the people. Because people see a political party as just being for election purposes. No. We, when you're growing democracy and you, you've done an election and you've contested, then you move on to the next point of begin to find solution. Because what is uh, uh, certain for everybody is to develop democracy and give value to the people and okay. de grow our country. Okay, Roman. Uh, I hope we have time to come back to you for your closing remarks. But let's get the closing remarks of Dr. Edwin Jonathan. Uh, you talked earlier uh, about um, uh, other political parties being a voice of opposition after re-election. I just want to remind you that there is a coalition of united political parties who, maybe on their own part, are acting as an opposition to uh, the, the government of the day. But that being said, uh, during the last election, we know that some political parties or a particular political party uh, sold its forms for about 200 million naira. Another political party sold it about half of that price and we saw it go down or trickle down. We heard the complaints of uh, Nigerians asking that the prices go down. Now, don't you think that if we have a five-party system, a five-political party system, that these monies will be higher and to be that uh, the highest bidder would clinch the ticket of the political party that is going to be for uh, the party for the rich people. Don't you think that this would be the case? Should we, uh, so should the Senate uh, decide to limit it to five political parties? Well, uh, I, I don't agree it will be so. Except, of course, uh, there's also the possibility that uh, men could uh, make it become so. But the idea of, uh, for me, in pulling down the political parties is to uh, just as you mentioned in the studio there in Lagos, to put them in manageable proportions. My colleague in, in the Lagos studio has talked about information and all of that. It is the parties that should inform the people. It is the parties that should uh, educate the people. You are a political party. What have you told us about what you stand for and the candidates you're fielding and all of that? I've lived in Port Harcourt for a very long time now, even in, in the 2019 uh, uh, elections. I saw only two parties, uh, you know, present candidates and then, you know, you know, uh, converse the ideas in, in any forum, you know. But here we have over 90, and we didn't hear anything from them. The old, it adds to the confusion. It adds, it makes even the political education a bit clumsy. When you have 90 political parties who have no ide ide ideology to present, who have no offices in the uh, you know, states of the federation, not to talk of the local government, how do we begin to even make up our mind which party to choose from, where to belong? There were basically only two political parties on ground. Their structures, their persons, and their ideals, or whatever they stand for, is just those two parties. So I still think that it will not in any way uh, short circuit the, the fundamental human rights of uh, Nigerians if we prune the parties. And again, the issue of the you just raised about people maybe uh, making uh, more expensive to get tickets in those parties. Even now, it is still so. And even if you increase it to 100 or 50, uh, 150 political parties, it will still be so. It depends on how we play the game. It depends on the, the mindset of the key players. Are we playing for Nigeria, for the goodness of this nation? Or are we playing for selfish political interests? If you leave the party, even if you make it 250 political parties to accommodate as many Nigerians as possible, there will still be major gladiators who will play the money uh, politics and still control the major parties and do their bid, uh, you know, get them to do their bidding. So I think, you know, for certainty, for proper political education, to even give us a template on how to choose. For me, choosing from 90 is clumsy, and we all know that, particularly by our level of political education. But choosing from five, can be a bit designable and uh, makes uh, you know gives a, a greater sense of responsibility. So I think that if the Senate will have the political will to push it further, 
It is a welcome development. We can all accommodate our political ideas and interests within a platform of five. For oh, Edwin and Jonathan, thank you so very much for talking to us on the show this morning. Dr. Edwin Jonathan is a political analyst um, in our Boja studio. Thank you so very much. There's so much to talk about on Potakot, rather. There's so much to talk about on this matter, but I'm afraid that's about how much time uh, would allow us to um, talk about it. Thank you for talking to us. And um, Raman, I know, I know the conversation has not been exhausted. I know you still have so much to talk about. Uh, but unfortunately, we really can't accommodate them anymore on this conversation. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you very much. Raman uh, uh, Adibi is the chairman of the Liberation Movement. Thank you for coming on the show. We'll take a break shortly when we come back. Uh, we'll dive into our next conversation. Don't go away. Say something. We'll say no.